Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Organic Modeling with Wasp tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to be first of all looking at how we can create a very simple aggregation. So this might be a repetition if you're familiar with Wasp but I just want the tutorial to be fully self-contained. And then after generating a simple Wasp aggregation we are going to look at how we can build an attribute but which is not going to be modeled in Rhino, but generated entirely in Grasshopper, so that we can control the parameters of this attribute after aggregation in order to create a variety of geometries. Let's get started. Uh, in, if you have been already following the WASP uh, 101 tutorial series, you're probably going to recognize the geometry we're going to be working with, because it's the same as the very first tutorial. And so this geometry is going to be an hexagonal prism. So we're going to start in Rhino by generating a, a polygon, by drawing a polygon. We're going to make sure that the number of sides is set to 6. And so then we're going uh, to press on our keyboard 0 to create it at the origin. And then we're going to type 10 so that we have a side of the length of 10. And then we're keeping shift pressed, we're going to click along the x-axis so that we have an hexagon that is aligned along that axis. What we then want to do is to create this as, a, as an actual closed geometry, we're going to select this hexagon and type extrude curve. And what you want to make sure is that both sides is set to no and solid is set to yes. And then we're going to type 10 and press enter. And now you can also go on and press delete and delete your original um, polygon. So if we change our visualization to uh, shaded, you can see that what we created is a solid uh, hexagonal prism. And so what we're going to be doing in this first tutorial is we're going to first of all build up an aggregation that will create uh, an assembly of those prisms. So to do that, what we have to do first of all is we have to define a set of points on each of the faces of this hexagon, which will define the positions in which we can add another part. And not only we want to set up a point, but we want to also define a, a line that will define in which orientation these elements are supposed to connect. So we're going to go on and get a point. Make sure that the mid snap is activated. And then we're going to go on the mid of one of the sides, keep control pressed, click, and this is going to put us in the Z snap mode. And then we're going to go on the midpoint of the vertical edge and click on it. And so we're going to create a, create a point exactly in the middle of this. We're going to go skip one side and then go to another side. And we can recall the last command with right click. Or again, you can get a point from there. And then we're going to once again go in the middle of the uh, side, keep control pressed and go to the mid of the edge and click. And then we're going to do this a third time. So mid and there we go. So now we have three sides which have a point and those points are, you see, they're alternating. So I have a side with a point, a side without, a side with one, a side without and so on. Now we're going to define some lines which will define not only the position in which we can connect another part but also in which orientation we can connect this part. So we're going to do that by going into here and getting a line component. And so I'm going to draw these lines in different orientations so that our hexagons will be allowed to rotate around each other. So I'm going to click on the first one here and then click on the mid of the top edge. And so I'm going to have a vertical line. On the second one, I'm going to click on the point and then click on the mid of the vertical edge. And then I'm going to have a horizontal line. And lastly, on the third one, I'm going to click and click on the mid of the bottom edge. And then I'm going to have a vertical line, but which faces downwards. So in this way, we created our very basic uh, part, which we're going to be then uh, aggregating in WASP. Now that we have our geometry defined in Rhino, the next step is going to be to import uh, all the different components into Grasshopper. So we're going to start with a geometry component. Right click and select set one geometry and add it there. You can then also select the geometry in Rhino and use this gray light bulb to hide it. And then I'm going to create a point component. 
right click, go to set multiple points and pick my three points. And lastly, I'm going to create a curve component. And I'm going to right click and set, go to set multiple curves and make sure to select the curves in the same order that I selected the points. So one, two, and three. And press enter. So what we have to do now that we have this basic component is we first of all have to um, wait. I need to find wasp first of all. There we go. So we're gonna first of all have to convert this into a wasp part so that we are able to aggregate that. And to go to that, we're gonna go to part, basic part. We're gonna connect our geometry to the geometry input. We're going to then create a panel and give a name to this uh, geometry and I'm going to call it EXA for example. And then we have to create some connections which are going to define where this part can be connected to other parts. And we're going to do that by going to elements, connection from direction, connect our geometry, connect our centers and connect our up directions which are our curves. And this is going to give us some connections, which you might visualize by changing your preview plane size. And you'll see that this has created planes in each of those. And we can now connect this connection to connection. And here we go, we have our uh, little wasp part. We are going to then um, do a very quick um, stochastic aggregation, which is a where to define an aggregation which is completely random, so which doesn't have any driving geometry for it. And so we're gonna go under aggregation, get stochastic aggregation. And I'm gonna connect my parts. We then need to specify how many parts we want in our aggregation. And I'm gonna say that, for example, I want 120 for now. And lastly, I'm going to go to the rules tab and get a rule generator. And what this component is there for is a component that will define all the assembly rules which are required for putting this aggregation together. We're going to connect this to the rule tab, to the part input, and then we're going to connect the two rules. Now, I'm going very fast here, and so if you're not familiar with WASP, uh, I will leave in the description uh, a link to the basic WASP uh, tutorial series, and you might go there and check more in detail what exactly we're doing here. So, lastly, we're going to create a button for the reset. And now that we created our simple aggregation, what we want to do is we want to go and visualize it. And so to do that, we're going to simply go to the parts tab, go to get part geometry, place it here. And here we go. I'm going to maybe disable my mesh edges. And we see that we generated our uh, very first aggregation. You also notice that it has a lot of uh, very flat areas and that's because connections are allowed to connect to connections of the same type. And if we want to disable that, we can just create a toggle, set it to false and connect it to the self C input of the rule generator. And if we now reset, you'll see that the, the behavior is a little bit more cloud like and we have less large flat areas in it. So if you're new to WASP, this might already be quite fun and feel free to uh, go along and start playing around by changing, for example, you can quickly change the number of parts by making more or less. You can also change the rules here by kind of creating different aggregations, as well as you could go and change the different geometries that you've set in Rhino to create something different. Of course, if you already have experience with WASP, you might be a little bit bored at this point. So let's get into the uh, actual focus of this video. So if you already have experience with WASP, you know that you can also attach to a given geometry, uh, to a given part, some other geometry that you want this to be carried around and then extract this after the aggregation to visualize it. Now, normally the way in which you would do it is that you would model some geometry in Rhino and then uh, add it as an attribute in Grasshopper and then visualize it at the end. 
Now what we want to do this time is we want to instead create this uh, attribute geometry directly into Grasshopper and the reason for doing that is that we sh will then be able to modify this geometry and see the impact on the whole aggregation. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go at the end and we're going to disable the preview of our part geometry so that we can visualize our one part here. And then we're going to come here and what I'm going to do to keep a bit of order is I'm going to create another geometry component and I'm going to connect it to my part geometry so that I have a copy of it down here. So what we want to do is we want to create uh, a geometry that is going to be a scaled down version of this. So it's going to be a central core which is going to have the same geometry as our part and then it's going to have branches that will go and connect to the three points where we have connections. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all use a deconstruct brep component to explode our part in its components. And so here we have uh, all our faces now. And so what we want to do is we want to pick the faces where we have a connection and separate them from the rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those faces away and then scale this shell with these three holes and then create pipes that connect to the central node. So the way we can do that is we're going to use a list item component. We're going to connect our faces output. And so you see that by default this one will just pick a certain part. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some sliders. So if, for example, I'm going to need to pick part one. And that's going to be my uh, part here. And then the parts are like the faces are normally in order. And so then I'm going to need part three because I'm skipping one and phase five. So I'm going to keep shift pressed and connect them all into the I input. And so now you see that I actually picked the three faces where I have that. What I'm going to also do is I'm going to instead create a cal index component and I'm going to use the same three sliders to remove from this list the same faces. So I'm going to connect this here and then we shift press connect one, three and five. And so you see that what I've done here is I've selected all the faces except those three. So what we want to do now is we want to do two things. We want to scale this geometry inwards so that we can create this node, this core node that we can have at the center. And so we're going to do that with the scale component. We're going to connect our geometry to the scale. And of course by default it's going to scale against the origin and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a volume component. And we're going to connect that to the center. And then we're going to create a slider which we're going to use to control the scale factor. So you can see here that I can control it from being the exact same size as our part or I can have it become extremely small. After I created this, what I also want to do is I want to scale my three faces and I want to scale them in two separate ways. One way is going to be to scale them so that they're going to match this same exact face so that they're going to form the beginning of my cone and the second one is, is going to be scaling it on this face itself so that it's going to create this end, the end of this cone. So I'm going to move my first scale down here. So I'm going to simply copy paste this. And I don't want to scale the whole face but what I want to scale is just the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wireframe component, brep wireframe. And that's going to give me the edges of the face. 
and then I'm gonna create a, a join curve component so that I can join all those curves into one. Now that I have these curves, as I said, I can just go on and scale them. And you see that the result will be to exactly match them onto that. And so that's gonna be our start of our cones. And then to create the end of our cones, we're gonna again create a scale component. And that's gonna be again our geometries to be scaled. But this time we don't wanna scale them around the center of this, but we wanna scale them around the center of each face. So to do get that, we're gonna do a polygon center component. I'm gonna connect them here. And then I'm, I could use CV, C, or CA indifferently now because they're gonna, all gonna be the same. And now you see that in this way, my curve scales on the face itself. And lastly, I'm gonna create a second slider, which is gonna allow me to control the scale of this one independently from the scale of the center. So I'm gonna connect it here, and then I'm gonna move it down here so that all my controls will be there and maybe group them too with Control G. So now you see that I can control. So I have two sliders which allow me to control the inner part and one slider that allows me to control the one on the face. So what I wanna do now is I wanna loft these two to create uh, this simple pipe. So I'm gonna create a loft component. I'm gonna right click on each of this and simplify them so that the data tree of both uh, components will be uh, identical. And I can then connect them to the loft component. And you see that this one will create this cone-like shapes. And so then I can just go and you see that by modifying the different geometries, I can get very different uh, attribute geometries. All right, so now we have our lofted cones and we have our inner shell that we created uh, at the beginning. And so what we wanna do simply is we wanna create a um, VREP join component where we're gonna connect both our loft and our scale. And then to make sure that everything is gonna be in one single list, we are gonna right click on the B input and select flatten. So now that you see the output of this is gonna be a single geometry that is gonna be our BREP cone. And here we can play around and modify it however we want. Great, now that we have our geometry, all is left to do is uh, simply create uh, an attribute out of it. And we can do that by going in the elements tab of WASP and getting a WASP attribute component. So an attribute is a very simple component that just takes three inputs. It takes an ID, so how do we wanna call this attribute so that then we can retrieve it if we would have more than one. In this case, it's gonna be just one, but if you would have more attributes. And so I could create a panel, and for example, I'm gonna call this branch. We're gonna give it a value, and the value is gonna be our geometry. So our beer up here that we created. And lastly, we have to specify if this attribute is a transformable attribute or not. So since this is a geometry and we want it to be transformed along with the with the part during aggregation, we are gonna create a toggle and set it to true and connect it to the transformable input. We can now take our attribute and connect it all the way back to the attribute input of our part. And we can now go on and reset our aggregation. And if you go and see your part, well, nothing changed at the moment. And the reason for that is that here we are visualizing the part geometry, but not the attribute geometry. So if you wanna visualize the attribute geometry, we are gonna first of all hide our part geometry. And then we are gonna go to elements and get this component that is called get attribute by name. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna get our part, connect it to the input here, and then we need to specify the ID of the attribute we wanna extract. 
And since we called our ID branch, our attribute branch, we're going to call it branch here as well. And if I connect it here, you see that automatically I have my uh, branches parts displayed here. And what's interesting is that I can of course go back and start editing my parameters here. And if I then go back and reset my aggregation, you see that this one will automatically update. And so what we can do is we can very quickly create very different looking results and explore the kind of different geometries that can be created. Now what we can also do is, now that we have all our attributes here, we can also make sure that the final output is not anymore a set of separated geometries, but we can actually merge them together into one single geometry, and we, know, we can also close any hole that might be left. To do that, we are going to once again use a join vrep component. We are going to connect our part here, and we are going to right click on the input, and once again select flatten to make sure that everything is in one list. And then what we want to do is we're going to use a component that is called cap holes. And we're going to connect the output of vrep join to it. It's going to take a moment. And we can now go on and hide the previous one. And so you see that now we have one single, and it's going to tell you here, closed vrep that is made of all our parts. We can now simply create a custom preview to give it a color and not just have the grasshopper and then turn the previous off of this then you could use a swatch to control whatever color it's gonna be and if you would want to see it in a bit of a better view you can just turn the preview to arctic and now we're gonna have this uh, white uh, visualization with a bit of occlusion as well so we can just go on now and start playing around. And you can see that by just changing some of the parameters, we can already very quickly create a variety of different looking patterns, which are quite interesting. Now, of course, these patterns don't look very organic yet, so they're still pretty rigid, but you might see that there is a certain tendency to uh, going towards starting to look like cellular geometries of some sort. So um, in the next tutorial, we are going to be really go into the detail and we're going to see how we can take this basic structure that we built with these attributes and then convert it into a mesh and use a whole variety of uh, mesh editing techniques to transform this into a um, very organic looking shape. So I hope you enjoyed this, very, this first tutorial in this organic modeling series. If you have any questions or any comments, just write in uh, the comments below and let me know. And I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.